Hey, what's up? Pete's the Wolfing Nerd here. Today we're going to take a brief look at Zorin OS Ultimate. Now, this was kind of sent to them by me. Uh, this edition specifically wasn't sent to them by me. However, they did send me first version of Ultimate. And then uh, this version is now listed as an ISO if you go to download Ultimate now. So if you own Ultimate, you actually already have this distro, you already own it, and you could download it just by heading over to where your normally download Zorin OS Ultimate and picking this ISO over the normal ISO. So this is what Zorin OS Ultimate Lite looks like when you first boot it up, and uh, it looks pretty good. Now, this actually looks very similar to the GNOME version. The only difference I can see um, just by first looking at it is the panel is slightly smaller, but that's not a big deal. But also, this uh, calendar and time right here, uh, on the GNOME edition, it has a little bit of a gap between the this right here and on the taskbar. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, this looks almost identical to the GNOME dis distro. Now, this is the menu. This is its own, uh, it's called the Zorin menu. And, uh, this is basically Zorin OS's menu for XFCE, and it's very similar to their GNOME menu. Now, I like this for the most part. The only thing I don't like about this menu is I don't like how the corners are rounded next to the taskbar. So, uh, I'll zoom in in editing right here. As you can see, the corners are rounded on the taskbar. Um, I don't really... I guess it looks fine for the right corner, but for this left corner over here, I don't really like that look. But other than that, this looks pretty good. Now, uh, let's go in the settings and we'll look at some features. So, uh, if we go to, uh, appearance right here, this is running in GNOME boxes, so this is VM, so keep that in mind. And this screen tearing right here, that's not OBS, so it's actually GNOME boxes, and that's happening on my main screen, so sorry about that. Now, uh, it does have the stock XFCE settings right here. I can change my style and icons. However, I wouldn't recommend changing your icons and style through here. Instead, I recommend going to Zorn Appearance. Now, to be honest, I kind of think that they should have, uh, like, changed the name of Appearance to be, like, uh, like, not recommended or something, and then just show this one. But, it's okay. So, uh... Let's, if we click on the Zorin appearance right here, uh, by default there's two layouts, the Windows 7 layout, which is what I'm using, and the Windows XP layout, uh, on Core. However, since I'm running Ultimate, it has a GNOME 2 layout and a Mac OS layout. Now, the GNOME version of the distro does have a Unity and a standard GNOME layout. However, those can't be recreated in XFCE very easily, so I understand why those aren't in this version of that distro. You can also customize here the title bar buttons. You could set it to either left or right. So yeah, I'm gonna keep it at the Windows 7 layout. There are desktop icons out of the box, which is nice. Now let's look at themes. So uh, there's uh, a white and a dark theme, and then there's six accent colors right here. I'm gonna go with the dark theme. Now uh, there's also a mode to daylight, but then at nighttime switch to the dark theme, which could be cool if you uh, if you just want it to be dark during night, I don't really know why you'd want to use that feature, because I personally always enable dark themes. Now, the accent colors on the light theme, all they really do is change this color for the selection right here. But on the dark theme, they actually kind of change the whole background, pretty much. So, the gray and blue, you don't really notice that as much, but with the purple and orange, the red... And the green, uh, the green you don't notice it as much either. I, I like sort of having a tint of it in the background of the color, but basically changing the full background, I don't really like that. So I like the way the blue, the green, and the gray looks, but I don't really like the full background. Other than that though, I think this theming is pretty good. There's also a hidden ni Windows 95 theme if you go in the applications. 95 you can actually get a kind of hidden windows 95 look now with this wallpaper it doesn't really look very good and 
To make it better, you'd have to go into icons in Zora 95 to get a complete look. Like this, it looks okay. I feel like, though, you have to have a darker wallpaper for this to really look good. So, let's actually switch to a darker wallpaper, see how this looks. So, I, I actually set the wallpaper to be blue, kind of Windows 95 style. And with this theme, this looks pretty good. You basically have a modern version of Windows 95 in terms of looks. So yeah, this Windows 95 theme is actually a pretty cool hidden addition. So, yeah. I don't really think this should have saved as an option. I like it being kind of hidden, because most people won't enable that. This is just kind of a cool thing to have still. Now, the thing I like about most of this distro is this is XFCE, but this feels like a different desktop. This feels like GNOME, basically. Another thing they did is uh, Zorn OS enables the notebook bar out of the box to make LibreOffice a little bit more user-friendly for people coming from Microsoft Office, so that is a pretty nice addition. Now, since Zorn does advertise itself to be a beginner-friendly distro, there are some adjustments I would have made if I developed this operating system. Like, one, I would have used the Linux Mint Software Center instead of the GNOME Software Center, because uh, the GNOME Flash Software Center is just way too buggy, I feel like, for a new user. A new user expects to just open the Software Center, be able to click on a uh, program. I'll just find something. Be able to click on a program like GNOME Music and just hit Install and have it work. I mean, this kind of works. Uh, it is installing. It's just when you install something with the GNOME Software Center, you're basically rolling a dice and uh, you have 50-50 chance of it if it's actually going to work or if it's not going to work. Another thing I would have changed is Dunar is pretty good, I guess, but uh, one change Peppermint OS makes to their distros, they actually use the Nemo file manager instead of the Dunar file manager, and I think that's a good change. I think Zorn OS should consider doing that too. Overall though, this has been a very good distro, and I can't wait to make more content around this distro. So, yeah. Now, let me know if you guys want a full review on this. I know I haven't done a distro review in forever. I've been using Manjaro Cinnamon, but I'm looking to distro hop right now. I was just waiting till I was done with my web browser video before I distro hop. So, maybe this might be an option for me to try next. But I will also be doing some comparison videos. If you guys remember my video on Zorin OS Ultimate versus Zorin OS Core, I'm going to do some videos like that again, but uh, using this distro and Zorin OS Normal Light, this is Ultimate Light. So, yeah. Anyways, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. And finally, GNOME Music is finally able to launch.